Development Coordinator, and we also have folks here from Glendale Arts and the Alex Theater, and Lisa Glickman, um, who will also be uh, making a presentation shortly. Great. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Mayor and members of Council. Before you today is the Glendale Arts Fiscal Year 2016-17 third and fourth quarter updates. The intent of my portion of this presentation is to provide you with a big picture overview of the Alex Theater and Glendale Arts Financials before I turn it over to Elisa Glickman, Chief Executive Officer for the Alex Theater and Glendale Arts. You may have noticed in the reports that we will be observing the financials for both the Alex Theater and Glendale Arts. We do this because Glendale Arts is responsible for the uh, for managing the Alex Theater. So Glendale Arts shares resources including staff and materials, so oftentimes those finances uh, and financial reports are, they overlap. Uh, as you may recall, the City Council approved a management agreement with Glendale Arts on August 13, 2015. The agreement has several provisions in it, including a management fee. The City will pay uh, Glendale Arts a management fee in a sliding scale over the next five years. Last year, we paid them $415,000, and we've done so again in this fiscal year. Moving forward, that figure will be reduced to $200,000, and you can see by the conclusion of the term, it will be reduced down to $150,000. There are other provisions in the agreement, and that calls for things like quarterly reports, an audit, asset inventory, minimum number of events or bookings, and a minimum reserve amount. Um, and that's really why we're here today, uh, because the agreement requires that we update you with the quarterly reports. And finally, the term, uh, this was executed in 2015, and it expires on June 30th, 2020. Uh, just a quick overview. So in this last, uh, in the year-end report, Glendale Arts ended the year uh, with a surplus of $114,000. Um, there are some other highlights um, to mention. Patrons at the Alex are up compared to the previous year, year uh, by a nominal amount. Uh, it's really about, about 1,000 uh, attendees. And then we also saw, saw another 10,000 attendees at the different community programming. The Alex bookings are down slightly. Uh, they are at 218 compared to 225 last year. <coughs> Keep in mind, this is another important KPI that we measure. Uh, they are, their target was to try to hit 230 bookings for this past year. Um, Elisa will be able to expand on this, but from what I understand, there were uh, at least uh, seven different last minute cancellations uh, that resulted in that figure. As far as the economic impact, this is something that we definitely measure uh, by taking a look at the um, a American for the Arts and Economic Prosperity Study. If you assume that each patron is going to spend $16.39 per each time they visit, uh, you will end up generating about $1.5 million worth of local economic impact here. And finally, GA's uh, surplus is down compared to last year. I have um, just a slide here to help illustrate some of the trends over the past years. So to focus in on the surplus, when you look in at the chart, the big green circles are good, the big orange circles are bad. Um, so you see how this story has played out over recent years. Um, this past year, it was $114,000 surplus, um, and last year it was $199,000. Uh, the previous years, this was the time when we were working on the expansion for the Alex Theater. Um, so, and then before that, in 2012, it was about $110,000 surplus. So the good news is that we continue to see uh, two years of surpluses. Uh, I guess the the downside of that is our surplus is not as big as compared to last year, and Elisa will be able to expand on that. Uh, just a quick snapshot at the Alex, the third quarter overall. Um, we saw that revenue was up compared to the previous year, but planning for events like the Open Arts and Music Festival, that proved costly. Uh, so the Alex Theater ended up losing about $52,000 that quarter. For the fourth quarter, we saw, again, uh, revenue increase to $543,000 from $501,000 compared to the previous year. And net income this, this quarter was about $98,000. Uh, again, Elisa will be able to expand on some of the bookings during this year uh, or during this quarter, but we saw some, um, some top talent come in, which resulted in um, sellout crowds at the Alex. 
And as far as the end of year profits, Alex Theater ended the year with a profit of $195,000 versus about $232,000 last year. So I've mentioned Elisa Glickman a few times. Um, she is the, the CEO of uh, Glendale Arts. We also have the advisory council listed um, for Glendale Arts as well. So I would like to invite on stage now Elisa Glickman, um, and she will be reviewing their annual report, which is the beautiful glossy report you have in front of you. Greetings. Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council, City Staff, I'm Elisa Glickman, and I'm the CEO of Glendale Arts. You all have the beautiful printed piece in front of you, and um, you've undoubtedly read the voluminous report that um, Ms. McLean presented. You have your own thoughts and your own questions. So rather than go page by page of both the report and the document, I wanted to just kind of speak frankly about how we define our success and really answer the age-old question, will Glendale Arts be self-sufficient? So while I do that, for the members of the viewing audience, I can uh, scroll through the annual report as well. So when Glendale Arts was created in 2008, the board and the council had two primary goals. We would become, how do I scroll through you this, just by the way? basically. Ah, look at how fancy that is. Um, had two primary goals. Will we become self-sufficient, meaning having no reliance on an, an, an annual management fee from the city to operate the Alex Theater, and as well as maintain and book the historic venue. But to us, success is more than just arts programming. It's more than just simply numbers, it's the heart and it's the soul of the community. The arts are really everything a community needs to, to thrive and be spiritually and financially successful. And Glendale Arts has been on the forefront of that charge. What other nonprofit do you know, or small business for that matter, has contributed more than $140,000 to help other performance groups perform at the Alex Theater, or raise money for their own nonprofits, or bring people from across the country or as far away as Argentina or Australia? What other small business has presented a host of free community concerts or signature events like the Open Arts and Music Festival? Um, to make the arts accept accessible to our residents and our visitors and give local emerging artists a platform to perform as well as get paid. What other small businesses have There's reinvested small. more than $175,000 back to the city of Glendale for things like parking, police, fire, office rental space, etc. What other small business has helped to generate more than $1.5 million in economic activity for local restaurants, retailers, and businesses by bringing more than 45,000, I'm sorry, 95,000 patrons to our community? And what other small business has worked so tirelessly to balance the Alex Theater schedule with a mix of high profile events, unique programs, that we've managed, to, we've even managed to stir up a bit of controversy, which is what the arts are really all about, to get people talking, to get people listening. Our path to self-sufficiency is more than just increased rental income, or selling more beer at concessions, or even more tickets at our <coughs> ticket booth. It takes an investment and a commitment from the entire community. It takes you, it takes me, it takes everyone watching to believe what we do, that without us, our community would be hollow. It takes an understanding that investment in the arts is an investment in property values, and it's an investment in quality of life, and it's an investment the same way parks and schools are in our community. In order for us to be successful, we need all the folks who value the crown jewel of our community, the Alex Theater, to support us through donations and contributions. We need businesses to invest in our programs, and we need folks like you to help us open the doors by sharing your vision the same way you did with our strategic planners for what the arts are for this community and what the arts can be. It's about all of us articulating to our constituents and our supporters and encourage them to invest in us the way that we've invested in Glendale. It was the vision of this council and the city of Glendale that helped shape who Glendale Arts is. And every day there are hardworking people making sure that that collective vision comes to life for our city. Just as a small testament to that vision, 
And as a, a bit of an anecdote, over the past weekend, many of you know I'm a Glendale resident and I live in downtown Glendale. I spent Saturday um, seeing a show at Antaeus. It's really great. If you haven't seen Hot House, please do so. And then we had dinner afterwards. On Sunday, we had dinner out in downtown again. We walked to a couple of stores, spent money we didn't have, and then caught a show at the Alex Theater. Never once did I move my car. Never once did we have to pay for parking or fight or battle traffic. We experienced that live, work, play community that you all envisioned and that you all really hung your hats on the arts in order to succeed. That's what we're doing. That is the value that Glendale Arts brings to the community. So while self-sufficiency and numbers are critically important to keeping the doors open and maintaining the bottom line, the key is our investment back into the dream and the vision that you all had for what downtown is going to look like and what we can do to help shape that vision and make that dream a reality. So with that, I thank you for your time, your trust in us as an organization, our trust in us um, to manage the Alex Theater and take care of it the way that you all deem that it should be taken care of to be the stewards of that venue and I open it up to any questions that you have because according to Ms. McLean, I got a lot to answer. Thank you so much. I have a couple of questions. questions? I just have a, a couple questions. Um, uh, you met, Jennifer mentioned that there were seven, seven bookings that were lost. Why, why were they canceled? Do you have any idea? So, or? Yeah, cancellations happen for a variety of reasons. Um, and not to throw any particular administration under the bus on a national level, but there have been some challenges that a lot of our promoters have seen trying to get visas for some of their performance groups and performers to come to the United States. Things that were easily fast-tracked before are taking a little bit more time now. Um, sometimes people bite off a little bit more than they can chew. So um, there are a variety of reasons that cancellations happen, but some of those that um, Ms. McLean cited are specific to visa challenges that some of our promoters had. Were, were any of those in the third quarter when you had no uh, So uh, they, act, they actually took place throughout the year. So traditionally, um, for those of you who are more seasoned at reading these long, boring reports, uh, you, you probably recall our, th our first and our third quarter are typically our most challenging quarters. The first because it's summer um, and we do a lot of maintenance projects to maintain the theater and bookings are down because most people are doing outdoor activities or on vacation. The third quarter is simply because um, we're coming out of Christmas, the second quarter, it, which is our busiest time. Um, so typically we budget for a loss in the third quarter anyway. Um, and we look at our second and our fourth Another question: um, How's the campaign campaign going for the uh, the selling of the seats? Seat naming campaign. So mm -hmm. we we did a soft launch over the summer for seat naming. Mm -hmm. um, our Nina Crow, who's our director of fund development and community partnerships, who is here with us today, has been working with several um, uh, co-chair folks and members of our seat naming committee to plan a series of house parties where folks will invite. Um, their friends, their their supporters, and really talk about, A, the value that the Alex Theater brings to the community, why they support the Alex Theater, and start to talk about the Alex Theater as, as, as a part of their personal story. So we anticipate that the seat naming campaign with our first dinner, which is taking place next month, will really start to take off. Um, uh, Council Member Sinadian and his wife have agreed to be honorary co-chairs of that committee and, and will be hosting a party sometime in the spring or summer. Um, Betty Porto has agreed to be um, one of the co-chairs and Greg Rammer and his husband Simon have also agreed. So those are sort of where we're starting and then some of our board members will take that lead. Uh, that being said, we still have about 800 seats. If anyone here is interested in having their name memorialized at the Alex, I could pick out a nice one. And um, last, um, what was my last question? Um, oh, you hired two new employees, PR and marketing. Can sure. you give us a little bit? So what we did in the last fiscal year as well as this year is we restructured the staffing composition. So we didn't necessarily create and 
entirely new positions. What we did was we took previously vacated or converted positions and we made them more purposeful to the organization's needs. So you mentioned seat naming. One of the things that we've made a significant investment in over the last two years are human resources and our fundraising and development department. You can't raise money if you don't ask for it. And you can't ask for it if you don't have the human resources in order to, to make those asks. So we've made significant contributions in those departments. Um, our event management team, which is primarily Alex Theater focused, what they do is they're essentially account managers for each event that takes place at the Alex. They speak with the, once uh, Marisa Hockian, um, who books all of our events. Um, finalizes the agreement, the event manager will take that agreement, they'll meet with the client, they'll advance their show, they'll work their show, and then they'll settle their show at the end. Those were previously part-time house manager positions that we elevated to full-time positions and gave a little bit more weight to. Um, but in terms of our bottom line, because our human resources number is quite large, um, and we're aware of that. Um, one of the reasons for that number being so large is because we staff the Alex Theater. A lot of our productions require large crews, and it's our contractual obligation to provide them with the right number of folks, and then they reimburse us for those labor expenses. So while certain positions like mine aren't necessarily always billed backable to an Alex Theater related event, it is spread across a myriad of the departments and divisions within the organization, and any positions that are new or have been refilled are previously converted positions. So I think over the course of the last two years, we've actually only added two brand new positions, whereas everything else was a position that was vacated and then converted to something else. And, and lastly, I just want to commend you and, and your staff for, for doing a great job. Um, you know, the Alex Theater is, is very important to our community. It's a jewel in the community. And uh, um, uh, thank you for working so hard, so hard to make it a go. It's an incredible team. We're very fortunate. Thank yes. you for your acknowledgment. Sure. Question? Yeah. I'll ask a yeah. question. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It, um, hi, Lisa. How are you? Um, we, we hear the, the question often asked um, about the the difference between Alex Theater and Glendale Arts. And I know it's been explained and explained multiple times. Maybe you can go over it again. The so, way the way I, I see it is Alex Theater is the Alex Theater. Mm -hmm. I mean it's it's an it's an entity, it's a physical um, thing and and more that it goes with that physical thing that needs to be managed and and run and all that. Uh, Glendale Arts is beyond that because there are many events, for example, that you just spoke of, which don't, which don't fall within the confines of what the Alex Theater does, and that's Glendale Arts. Sure. Is that correct? Sure. Um, it's it's absolutely 100% accurate, but if I could maybe simplify it a little sure, bit. Um, Glendale Arts is the umbrella company. Right. Everything falls under the umbrella. The primary goal and responsibility of Glendale Arts is to be the stewards of the Alex Theater. Book the Alex, maintain the Alex, make sure that the Alex's brand equity in this community continues to grow in a positive way. The other pieces of the operation, like the festivals, now the, the taste, those types of things also fall under the umbrella and they're a smaller portion of the operation, but they're sort of what we give back to the community outside of the bricks and mortar of the Alex. Um, our, our job as the umbrella is to not only make sure, as I said, all of the things about the Alex Theater that are important that both the city council um, tells us that they want for the Alex Theater, but to also address the programming needs and wants of the community, but it's also to, to, to raise money and generate income. Um, and some of those other things, again, like the taste um, and, and to a certain extent the Open Arts and Music Festival, those are, <coughs> income gen or are supposed to be income generators um, that will help the operation grow so that we can further sustain and support the Alex. Okay. Is, is, uh, are those aspects of Glendale Arts that are not directly related to the Alex uh, in any way a distraction? Um, to the actual business of running the sure. Alex? Um, I think
think that they're complementary, and our board thinks that they're very complementary, and I'll tell you why. Um, the Alex can't be just for physical reasons booked 365 days a year, and there's no way to grow, in our estimation, the Alex theater operation without the entire community really understanding the true value of what the arts can bring in, in its totality. Um, and Glendale Arts puts the Alex Theater to work. So for example, when we have the Open Arts and Music Festival, we now have it in front of the Alex Theater. That gives 7,500 to 10,000 plus people exposure to a venue that they may not have ever heard of, may not have ever thought about, but now there's this huge recognizable icon in the middle of this free open festival. Um, the staff, the crew that works at the Alex Theater, Glendale Arts pays them out of Glendale Arts' budget for the Open Arts and Music Festival to work that event. So our crew is getting their skills honed in a different and unique way, and they can then talk to our event promoters and our rental users and say, you know, we did this outdoor festival and we use this, let's see if this tactic or this trick will work at your event inside the Alex Theater. So they're honing their skills and learning different things in new ways. Um, should we pr be focused 100% of our time on the Alex Theater? We have people who are focused 100% of their time at the Alex Theater. The bulk of our human resources budget is Alex Theater labor and Alex Theater resources. 90% of the office of Glendale Arts is focused on Alex Theater activities. The other things are really to complement what we do at the Alex and to support all of those other efforts. Because as I said, we can't simply become um, self-sufficient, if that's the goal of this council, um, without looking outside the walls of the Alex Theater for other revenue opportunities. There's only so many seats that we have, there's only so many dates on the calendar, and there's only so many fundraising and sponsorship opportunities to drive that train, especially if we're not 100% driving the programming, which is why we have our rental subsidy programming budget so that we can better curate what comes to the Alex and we can better, I mean, one of the things I think if you look at in the annual report, oops, I'm going backwards. If you look at the annual report, there's this beautiful chart of the types of shows that take place at the Alex Theater. That is an extraordinary balance for an organization that does not 100% drive the programming, but that's achieved through careful curation and being able to provide that $140,000 of rental subsidies to nonprofit performance groups and, and other groups that we want to attract to the area. So that is really key to defining that balance. And without those ancillary dollars that we invest back, um, we would not be able to achieve that. I don't know if I fully answered your question or if I went off track. You did. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Council member. Question. question, but not from Ms. From Ms. Glickman. Okay, let me see if there's a now question for us. I have a question. <laughs> oh, wait, <laughs> wait till I start talking. Wait, 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 <clears throat> so I love the annual report. I love the, um, the uh, again, significant uh, green circle, if you will, the 114,000. Um, but, I mean, to be honest, I'm a little disappointed that the, the city council and the city of Glendale didn't get a call out in the annual report. I mean, we contribute $450,000. I see all these other groups that are getting accolades and there's the executive committee and the advisory council and I, I just got this now. I'm looking through it. I really don't see any thanks so, to the Glendale well, City we Council. We acknowledge the council We're on the sponsorship page. What page is uh, that? Because we are a private nonprofit, we as an organization determined that it would be inappropriate to specifically call out members of the council um, in our advisory board because you don't serve in that capacity. Um, but the city itself is acknowledged and noted in our sponsorship section, which I don't have a copy of the annual report in front of me because <coughs> I gave it to you. Um, but what page? So if you look at the specific pages for the specific events that um, Ms. Crow noted, so we've got here, City of Glendale under the taste. So those are the ways that we acknowledged all of you as our partners and our sponsors. 
and that's peppered throughout the document. Well, that's maybe because we opened up Maryland Avenue and gave that. I'm talking about the, I mean, the main funding, 450,000 of the, uh, the operating expenses, the management fee of the Glendale Arts. I don't wanna, I don't wanna go any further, but it would have sure. been nice in that thing. I'm not saying put my picture in there, um, but on the opening letter by Mr. Weir and yourself, you know, we, what we do and what we've accomplished would not be possible without the continued support of donors, partners. Uh, City of Glendale would have been great to put in there. You're right, and that was an absolute oversight on my so. part. So I, uh, I take full responsibility for that, but please know that it has no reflection on how much we value both your money um, no, as kinda well as does, your ongoing though. input. Alyssa, it kind of does, I mean. It, it really doesn't. Um, we well, not from your end. You, it might not have been intended, <laughs> it was not but intended. from someone who's you sure. know who's been voting for 13 years to contribute. It's in the millions of dollars towards uh, first the Alex Theater and now Glendale Arts. I sure. mean, I would have liked to have seen a little more, just as the council as a whole. Forget individuals. Sure. But. No, I, I hear you, and that's and that's duly noted, and and that's fully my responsibility. So my apologies for that. It was it was not meant as a slight. It was really. Um, an opportunity for us to acknowledge the community as a whole for their contributions to what we did, but really tout how awesome we were. And I think in um, articulating our awesomeness, we may have uh, created a, a bit of an oversight there. So my apologies in that regard. Okay, that's it. Councilman, Councilmember Aljania. I don't have questions from her. Right. Oh, then let me ask a couple of questions, then we go. I don't know, your questions are always tough, though. No, no, mine, is, mine are easy to ask compared to what Mr. Najjar said. All right, please, so I, 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 I'll answer anything you've got. No, I, I agree with uh, Councilmember Najarian <laughs> because uh, this is a city asset. Without, without Alex, there is no Glendale Arts, basically. It's a city asset. Well, without we don't Alex, want there is no Glendale, we like to say, but, you know. <laughs> I don't know how true that is, but, but, but overall, we don't want to be acknowledged individually by our names. I mean, I see Councilmember uh, Tinanian is here because he's a donor and he donated, and rightfully so, his name has to be here because he donated, you know, sure. individually on his, on, on his own. But overall, city of Glendale has to be acknowledged on the front page everywhere for whatever is related to Alex, bottom line. There is no, you know, it's not an oversight. It's, it has to be that way. So the question, couple of, and, on, on top of everything that we contribute to, to Alex, uh, there is, so, we so do if not. I, if I may, Mr. Mayor, I just want to slightly change the talking point a little bit because the management fee, while it's put into our contributed income line item, it is earned revenue on our part. So it, it, it's, while the city pays us to manage the theater on their behalf, and starting with this current management agreement, it's on, a significant sliding scale. So I'm not devaluing all of the financial support that the city has given the venue um, and by virtue of the venue Glendale Arts over the last several years, um, but it, it's it's less of a, of a charitable gift and, and more of earned income, I think. And, and, and that's the importance of the management fee and how we talk about the management fee, I think, moving forward. If I may. Look, I, I understand. I, I don't want to go back and forth on that. It's we, we love the Alex. We will do everything for Alex to keep it the way <laughs> it is, maintain it, whether it's Glendale Arts or it's somebody else or what have you. But we'll we'll contribute whatever we have to contribute and whether you consider it as an earning earned income or contribution, it doesn't matter. I mean that's what we committed to do for Alex and that's what is gonna happen. But questions question is this. Uh, I'm looking at profit and loss previous year comparison, uh, page five of six, it says the, on the income portion, it says contributions, 56,000, that is, I think, what BGA is contributing to, to Alex, and last year was $100,000, am I correct? I'm sorry, you're looking on page six or page five? five. I'm page sorry. Page five. Okay. So, that, that contribution is $56,000 from DGA? No, um, contributions are in, in, DGA is actually a sponsorship. So um, 
I don't have the financial doc. Are you looking okay. at the actual report itself, or are you looking at the financial breakdown? It says profit and loss, previous year comparison. Oh, I see. Thank January you. through March 2017. Okay. And you're okay. looking at this total dollar amount. Right. So then it's the rental income. That's 103,000. That's what right. the. Right. So this was just the third quarter. The Downtown Glendale Association's um, sponsorship of the Alex Cedar, which was $45,000 last year, was actually amortized over the second, third, and fourth quarters because that's when we realized the income. So okay. this also includes individual giving. So our end of the year, our annual campaigns that we do, any of our fundraiser or special events. And then in this case, this also included the taste of downtown Glendale for last year. And the labor income is 108,000. This is the, the income that we, we charge people. We if charge they, the promoter. And then we have to pay. That's kind of a wash because what we charge is what we have to pay to, to sure. our employers. Okay. There's a little bit of profitability built into some of our part-time labor, but our full-time labor, obviously, because we have um, taxes and benefits, there's, it's a higher cost to us. Okay. And ticket service income is $85,000. Can you explain that? The, so ticket service them? fee income, there's three ways that ticket service fee income is derived. One is we, we pay our ticket provider a certain dollar amount, and then we charge a certain dollar amount back to the client so that we can recoup our costs. Okay. The second is our restricted fees. And currently, we charge on any ticket that's over $20 a $4 fee for the facility programming account that goes into a restricted fund that's supposed to maintain the theater and help us with our rental subsidies. Okay. Um, that's where those income, or that's what that's referring to. Okay. And going down to the expenses, I see that we only spent $21,000 on advertising. Uh, am I correct? Marketing? Is that what it is? So um, there's different ways that we market at the Alex Theater and then at Glendale Arts. So because they're not our shows, we don't market the shows individually. What we do at the Alex Theater is we provide our rental users with marketing tools like a monthly e-newsletter, a website, a mobile app, um, our social media. We have a designated individual who handles posting and making sure that that information gets out there. But the primary marketing for the Alex Theater events are driven by the individual event promoters. The other ancillary marketing is for things like Glendale Arts, you know, pretty bags and pens and all of that stuff, branding, websites, again, mobile apps, social media, and then our event-related marketing. So marketing related to the Open Arts and Music Festival, marketing related to promoting the taste, things that are event-driven that we're producing, we invest and, and handle the marketing for. And that's part of this 21,000? And that's all 000? part of this larger budget. Okay. And again, uh, keep in mind, that's just for that particular quarter. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, um, on a positive note, do you think you can benefit from a post-event venue? That are we losing any uh, events or any revenues because we don't have a, a post-event mm -hmm. reception area uh, for for Alex? So sure. I know that some of the people that I knew that they rented Alex uh, after the event, they wanted to have a reception or sure. have a gathering, which is a little bit larger. I know we can accommodate them in the, in the, in the front entry right. portion, which is beautiful, but they wanted something else. Do you think we, can, we, we benefit for, from a, such, a, such a venue if we had one? For, for a long time, now I've been with the organization 14 years, and this has been a conversation ever since I arrived, that um, one of our greatest deficits is that we don't have a space at the Alex Theater for a pre-show reception or sit-down dinner like, say, some of our competitors like Royce Hall. Um, we don't have a small rehearsal space that if the Alex Theater is booked, we could move someone into that space. So a multi-use, multi-purpose, multi-functional space that is within close proximity to the Alex. It would be great to have something that's available to our clients that is pre and post show. Uh, we certainly have the upstairs terrace and the courtyard. Both present inherent challenges, especially for pre-events. 
um, but neither give us an opportunity for uh, sit-down dinners or something that's a little bit more formal. And again, when we lose larger sort of award ceremonies or banquets or, or those sorts of things, it's usually to a venue that, that has those amenities close by or on site. Um, it all, also, just from a, a revenue standpoint, if there was a space that we could manage in that regard um, and work you know, catering deals and rental deals and work through packages, there's an ancillary income stream for us. We've just never been in a position where the space that sort of surrounds the Alex was either affordable to us or was something that we could kind of work with a, a developer or another person to identify exactly what it is we needed. Now, we, we are getting huge benefits from all of the new restaurants that are downtown for a place for folks, especially Eaton, for a place for folks to go afterwards because they have that magnificent terrace and they have that great outdoor patio. So a lot of our clients are using that as an amenity, but it still doesn't mean that if something like that came along, it wouldn't serve a grander purpose for the venue okay. itself. Thank you. Um, I think Mr. Councilman Alexander has, thank you, thank you, uh, has questions from staff. On this Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you. On this report, it says page two, and on top of the page, it says agreement. The city pays Glendale Arts, and then says 2015-16, and goes until 2018-19, 2019-20. Um, somehow baffled. Is this what we are expecting to see? Because this is not agreement. Agreement is that if it doesn't happen, let's say somebody is responsible or somebody will pay for it. What it means agreement and there are certain figures here. Yes, sir. So this is part of the management agreement that the city signed with Glendale Arts to manage the Alex Theater. So from year to year, the city will contribute in this case, $415,000 to the Alex so that they can, or to Glendale Arts so that they can manage the Alex Theater. So that's really the intention of that fee. Uh, it was with the idea that Alex Theater may have some difficulty in um, fully, uh, in having a um, self-sustaining operation without some support of the city. Um, so this is essentially a grant um, and we are not expecting to receive that money back from the Alex Theater. We are paying Glendale Arts to manage the Alex Theater. Does that answer your question? And, um, I'm not sure. Okay, <laughs> what I'm, we'll get there. I'm saying in real life, so if I have agreement in my line of work, so that's it. The person should take responsibility and do whatever they have to do to pay me or I pay them 215000 or whatever it's, 200000 and they have to do the job. They can't come back and say, by the way, I was supposed to be asking you 200000 but now I need 260000 This agreement is like open-ended agreement that if they become short on money, so we have to pay, right? Looks like Mrs. If, Beers if has I, her finger if on the I can, um, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, Mr. Alajanian, um, if I can bring some, hopefully, some clarity. This agreement was signed uh, with the Glendale Arts uh, for five years, and so this five-year agreement from the get-go, based on what our ask of the Glendale Arts was and their ability to provide the services in managing the Alex Theater and the arts programming, um, was to have a five-year agreement and to have us pay them on an annual basis from the $415,000 in, in the initial year of 15-16 uh, up until 1920, which goes down to $150,000. And so that agreement we brought to council, I believe, what, in 15-16, slightly prior to that, um, to sign the agreement, and it was a five-year contract, basically, that said we would pay them on an annual basis for them to run uh, the operations at the Alex Theater and to provide the services that they do. So it's a contractual what I'm agreement. To say I'm sorry, maybe I didn't explain myself right. See, if I make an agreement in my business with a company, I expect them to do it. 
I mean, they can't come back and uh, say I did not meet the goal. Alex Theater is part of our system. And if they don't make it to that point that they only would need 200,000, then what happens? It's not an agreement, actually. It is, we will provide the balance of it. They don't have resources to say, okay, I'm gonna bring from my house, I will, loan, I will take a loan on my house and bring the balance it to make it like 200,000, right? Let me see if I can explain this way. Um, if you owned a commercial building, if you own several commercial buildings, right. um, and when you have one in Glendale, but you live in New York City, and you have somebody manage that building for you. You say, I'm gonna pay you a fee, and you manage that building for me. You take care of all the maintenance, you pay for it. Don't bill me back. But you pay for the maintenance, you pay for the operations, so the, the person at the, in the lobby at reception, um, you're gonna pay for that. That's a similar situation that we have here. I don't know how to run a theater, um, but it is our theater. And so we hire somebody to run that because we want, we, uh, I'd say Glendale and, and the councils at the time wanted a vibrant uh, entertainment regional performing arts center in the center of town. So the, the 415,000 is a, a fee that we pay to operate our asset the way we want. That's the best way that I can explain it. it. What's unusual about that is, let's say that it, that you did have, um, you you did live in New York and you had a commercial building here, and you said, I want that commercial building to, to stay active. And I'll tell you what, you take all the profit on it, but I'm gonna pay you this much in year one, I'm gonna pay you a little bit less in year two, a little bit yet less in year three. And then we gotta make it happen. If it doesn't happen, that person, that property manager, will go away. And then you're left with your building that you want to be active and, and vibrant and whatnot. You'll hire somebody else to do it. So that, if you look at it that way, I hope that explains it a little bit better, um, the, the, the role of the management fee. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Comments? Is there a motion? I'll move the item. Second. Roll call, please. Council members Agajanian? Yes. Devine? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Sunanian? Yes. Mary Garpenny? Yes. What's next, please? Motion to adjourn on second. So for a moved. Special. Second. We are adjourned. <laughs>